Hey, it's add on time. So the last time we did one of these videos, it was before the whole massive add ons bad debate that sprung up over the course of Shadowlands. So we're going to be taking a bit of a different approach today. First up, quality of life add ons that we think you'll need for Dragonflight that are just plain good. After that, we'll go into the forbidden realm of add ons that have power but might distract from the gameplay experience that the devs perhaps designed for you. Now, the huge changes to Dragonflight's UI actually mean that we've got a whole new category of add-ons that we would even consider critical. So even though I know a few of us are going to be trying to roll with as few add-ons as possible, thanks, as always, to the hard work of these devs, there's stuff to look at. And... Thanks to our sponsor, Skillshare, who are the closest we've got to downloading a skill into your mind matrix style. Here's Michael Murr, and he is going to teach you game development. And the first thousand of you to follow my link will get a month of Skillshare Premium for free. Okay, right, programming and Unity. For me, you know, I kind of did the, the, the hardcore old school way. You know, went to university, did a kind of boring custom engine programming degree. This is all well and good, but let me tell you, this will actually get you stuck in and get you learning by doing immediately in engine. So do it. I mean, what better way to learn C sharp than to use it to script a game in Unity? These are the resources that really didn't exist when I or my friends were first starting off in like 2012 with Skillshare. Then you can save years off your learning journey by just getting started today. So take Michael's courses, do some local game jams, meet people in your local game scene. These are brilliant. They're for beginners. They'll take you right through up to the intermediate and beyond. And they're just awesome. And Michael has so much content. He's got 2D, he's got 3D, building an RPG. This is an awesome resource to have out there. And any of you can get it right now for free on Skillshare, the online learning community for creators. So what better way to use that free month that the first thousand of you will get if you click my link down below. First up, the stuff you'll always need. In 99% of circumstances, we do recommend you've got these installed because they're just going to make your life easier with basically no downsides and you can basically make them look vanilla too. All right, details. As much as having the measurement of DPS, you know, have some negative outcomes. I mean, look, I enjoy the dick measuring contest, frankly, so I'll be using it and uh, hey, it does let you know if you've got maybe some room for improvement or maybe it'll help you feel good about yourself. Weak auras then. We'll go a lot more in depth into this one in an upcoming video for our recommended UI setups. But uh, I mean, look, weak auras is awesome. It lets you basically just do anything. Uh, that's it. Weak auras based UI setups are technically speaking the best you can possibly have in the game. We mean that very literally. Uh, you can go to wago.io and have a look around there. You can find plenty of weak auras and we will have ones in our upcoming UI video. Leatrix Plus. So while LVUI did bake in some of Leatrix's things, it's sometimes nice to have the good improvements without needing LVUI, right? Because maybe you don't want its style. So Leatrix just has some of the nicest miscellaneous upgrades to World of Warcraft, like fast loot. Oh, fast loot is beautiful. And because we don't even recommend using LVUI anymore, you'll want to have all the nice fixes that Leatrix brings. So yeah, Leatrix is absolutely awesome. You should check it out. Lots of just nice little tweaks for you to enjoy. Then, angrier world quest, world quest list, or world quest tracker. That's because world quests are still in Dragonflight, of course, but the quest UI is still a bit shit. So thankfully, these are going to help you out. Now, some people prefer tracker, some people prefer the list, others prefer angrier world quest. Basically, just take a look at the screenshots and decide what style clicks for you. And for what it's worth, angrier world quests does look the most like the default UI, so it'll blend in. Auctionator, I've been using this bad boy for years. The new AH from Shadowlands is awesome. It has great functionality, but Auctionator just makes it that little bit nicer, especially if you're selling items, which given that professions are more important, I think you'll want to do. So there you go. Basically having a quick way to engage with selling items without having to go knee deep into stuff is why this add-on is awesome. Next, I've got Plater. Now, while it's not 100% required, look, the sheer density of enemies in dungeons does mean that Plater's improvements to spotting enemies and uh, casts that you should look out for, it just does make life easier. 
For our UI video, we're going to investigate available profiles to see if there's anything that we think works particularly well with, uh, with Dragonflight. But overall, I'd just say Plater is not literally necessary, but I do think it is a massive upgrade over the base nameplates that most players would do well to have. This is the most exciting thing about Dragonflight to talk about on the add-ons front. The add-ons that you actually don't need, kinda. LVUI, look, it's a titan, it's legendary, it still has amazing features and unmatched customization. Many people will need it and want it and love it. But for a lot of the most important things, those are baked into the game or are available elsewhere in add-ons that are less of a complete overhaul. And with LVUI, also I've got to mention Bartender. It still is more powerful and customizable than the new UI, but it's no longer necessary. So if you like a weird setup that you can't replicate, you should definitely continue using it. Bagnon, oh, this is a favorite of many, but the game itself now has a combined bag feature and even a search bar. Now again, the add-on does have more features, uh, like the caveat here with Elf UI, the add-on technically is better, but it's also an extra add-on that removes you from perhaps what you might think as being the clean, fresh World of Warcraft feeling. Next then, an add-on for the mission table. There is no mission table, so you don't need one. Simple as, that feels good to say. Theoretically, technically, and we're saying this to highlight a point, instead of being deadly serious, deadly boss mods and bigwigs? Yeah, so reports from raid testing uh, say that the raid design language has actually improved so much that groups were able to understand and clear the fights without using add-ons at all. I mean, the developer of DBM was even thrilled about this. Now, obviously, DBM will warn you of mechanics well ahead of time. It will present them in ways that makes them hard to miss. So it is obviously powerful and useful, especially with other great things it has, like the range checker info panel. But perhaps you'd enjoy looking at the game world rather than just hearing, run away, little girl, which uh, is a noise I think we're all rather used to in the game. Next, a few UI things that are not necessary but absolutely are worth trying out, either to spice up your UI or solve some problems. Mouse over action bars. One of the trends that we've noticed is that instead of UI replacements like we usually have, we now have UI improvement add-ons. It's kind of neat. So mouse over action bars was designed specifically to add some of the missing features from the new UI. Uh, the most obvious uh, sort of main one being the mouse over feature and some bars visibility settings. So now, rather than have your bar of items and out of combat stuff being on screen all day, you can now make a bar only be visible on mouse over, which is great. That means you can just throw a bunch of binds there, you don't have to think about it. And you can do that without having to rebuild what you want in Elv or in Bartender. Or even you can hide all buttons until combat starts. Sweet. As one commenter said, your set of add-ons are what will allow me to stay with Blizz UI. So if that's what you want, this is what to look at. Move anything then. It lets you move anything. The base UI does not let you move everything, so this add-on will still be useful. The bag bar and micro menu are not movable. I'm shocked about this, but at least with this add-on, that won't be a problem for you. But seriously, why? Anyway, in the same vein of fixing issues, we've got advanced raid frame settings and health bar color. Uh, add-ons that just add a little bit more functionality to the raid uh, and unit frames, like some uh, extra sizing and color options. Uh, ARFS is actually planned to be extended too, so uh, hopefully the dev will add more things over time. Good shit! Next then, click. Unfortunately, we do recommend click if you really want click cast options. Click casting does of course exist in Dragonflight, but it does have some frustrating limitations. Right now, it only works with mouse buttons, which I mean, is actually okay for me personally, but uh, click does have full keyboard support, which is awesome. Now, not a huge deal with mouse overcasting being baked into WoW, but you can just mouse overcast your action bar hotkeys. But if you, of course, used click extensively or you want the sort of no action bar binds lifestyle, yeah, do keep click installed. Oh, Pi, we've been recommending this for years. It's kind of advanced as far as UI goes, but it's awesome. It just saves you in keybinding space. 
you can hold a button and then it will make a radial menu appear and you can just drag your mouse to make a selection. Now that obviously is so much easier than having to bind a whole bunch of different options. It's great for your utility items like your teleports, hearthstones, talent swaps, emotes, and raid markers. Dragon Riding UI. So this one is a bit of an honorable mention then. We don't even recommend using this necessarily, but it is cool. It's just a weak aura that shows you specific details on your Dragon Riding current status and yeah, I just thought it was neat. As with all new things, the new talent trees are nice, but there's just a few little tweaks that do make them even better. And thankfully, we're already sorted in this front because devs are awesome. Talent Tree Tweaks. This is a brand new add-on that, right now, only adds a few features. It's got Spell ID on Talents, which is great for advanced users, and also a way to copy other people's talents. So, if you see someone absolutely pumping out some serious damage in Raid, you can inspect them and copy their talent build and give it a shot yourself. And of course, with the new changes, all without having to hearth or use a Tome of the Clear Mind. So, pretty sick, and the dev is actually open to feature requests. Talent Tree Viewer then. This is actually by the same dev. Pretty, uh, pretty industrious. It's basically an in-game talent calculator. It's great. It lets you fiddle around with talents without overwriting your existing ones. Or check other class and spec talents. Or, if you're below max level, even plan a talent build on the fly and save it for later. Glows Refundable Talents. This is another fun, quick little tweak. It basically means that if you want to play with your own talents a lot, uh, it's a good recorder that you can get, where if you right-click a talent, that ends up breaking the point requirement and undoing half your tree, which is a massive pain in the ass, this will actually make it glow. It'll glow the talents that you can remove without breaking the rest of your talent tree. And that lets you, at a glance, see what talents you can swap in and out without having to worry about your overall setup. Pretty sweet. And now this fun section is for the players who want some general add-ons to spice up their non-sweaty, sweaty gameplay time. Handy Notes, yeah, okay, obviously, perhaps even controversially, Handy Notes is just an awesome add-on. It has a whole ton of features, but uh, a lot of the modules, of course, are built to show you the location of every secret in a zone and tell you the solution. Now what this does do is it turns the discovery of secrets into just following a checklist. And that is, for a lot of people, a hell of a lot less fun. And it does waste a lot of the hard work the developers do put into making these secrets. So, if your first instinct is to do this for rare secrets and even the dragon riding glyphs, I would still recommend trying to just, you know, go raw, maybe have some of the discovery yourself. This might be insane, but Matt actually had a ton of fun in beta trying to find the glyphs for dragon riding. He was incoherently shouting something along the lines of WoW being a real video game with real level design. Uh, he, he mentioned Mario 64, it was, oh, it was very weird, but that's what happens when you don't use an add-on that solves the game for you. Immersion! Immersion is awesome, we do have a prior relationship with the developer from our WoW Tales time. He's pretty damn awesome in what he makes. Immersion is actually a thing that's split out of console port, which is a must if you want to use a gamepad for WoW. But Immersion basically just makes quest, uh, quest text appear like the talking head frame. It breaks the text up as well, so you don't get walls of text. It's so much more readable, it is 1 million percent recommended in Dragonflight, because hey, the quests are worth paying attention to. Tomcat's Tours, this is a big one, so do you want to check some uh, Zareth Mortis style stuff or Corthia like stuff damn near anywhere in the game? Do you want to do your holiday events efficiently? Whatever it is, this is your add on. The daily tracking of rare spawns shows you, you know, uh, what they drop on your map. It even has routing to efficiently get things like the candy buckets for the Hallow's End event that just passed. Crazy amounts of work went into this. So, yeah, hopefully uh, you only install this, though, when you want to, for the fun, rather than, you know, any Corthia or Maw-like power grinds, which, thankfully, don't appear to be a thing. Altaholic. This one is worth a mention because Dragonflight basically doesn't have crazy grindy power systems for alts, and it's got pretty key things shared across your characters, like the Dragon Riding Glyphs which does mean it's a more alt-friendly expansion, and anyone who uh, has a ton of alts will know about Altaholic. But I figured we'd bring it up anyway. So this is the number one add-on for tracking anything that you need to know about all of your alts. It's that simple. 
Instance Achievement Tracker. Now, this one may not be too appropriate for Dragonflight, but if you want to kill some time during pre-patch or just at any time, this is a lovely little thing that helps you get achievements in old instances by tracking your progress and showing you concise explanations in its own window and in chat. Brilliant. BTW Quests. This is an old add-on, but it's one that's only came to uh, our attention recently. So it tracks which quest lines you have completed in game so that you know what ones you have not done. And this is just super important if you want to go and get the story for old zones. But uh, of course, with the quality of some side quests being, uh, you know, way higher than usual in Dragonflight, it'll be good to just have a big old list of good content that you can go and do. All the things. All the things tracks everything. Reach 100% and uh, you, you don't get a prize, but at least you'll know you have all the things. And plus then, so these add-ons can get hyper-specific, but until Dragonflight is in the wild, a lot of the specific stuff won't exist, but here is the core that you should consider. So we've got Mythic Dungeon Tools. If you're a big M plus sweat lord or a tank, this will be pretty damn helpful as always, helping you to import, plan, and share dungeon routes so that people actually know what's going on. Another add-on then is Angry Keystones or whatever weak or equivalent. Uh, basically, the default Mythic Plus display uh, does the job, but you probably want some more information, so thankfully, Angry Keystones and many of the weak aura-based equivalents you can find in wago.io, they have got you sorted. Then we've got Astral Keys, or a weak aura equivalent. Basically, coordinating keys with guild and party, uh, you know, party members quickly can increase your efficiency, right? lets you do more dungeons per hour, which means more time actually enjoying the game rather than sitting around and waiting. So this is a handy one for knowing what keystones people have. Weak auras itself then, look, as always, there will be dungeon weak auras and uh, for anything else that people want to be, you know, coordinated on, be that the thundering affix or any dungeon mechanics, there will be a weak aura that will pop up on wago.io during the first few weeks of Dragonflight, so keep an eye out for that. Then there's Omni CD. This is a very good standalone add-on that lets you display party cooldowns. You obviously don't need this, but it's always good to know when your party has got their shit ready. There aren't that many raid-specific add-ons. Uh, DBM or Bigwigs were already discussed, right? And all you really need for the rest is, is weak auras. So on that topic, look, weak auras, there will be the standard set of raid weak auras if you want them, and they're usually really good. Basically, these just mean that anything boss specific will crop up, um, you know, on your screen and, and you'll know. It's weak auras. Shit's whack. That's so powerful. Next, then, we've got method raid tools. There's so much in this that it's hard to know where to begin. Like, do you want cooldown tracking? Expanded ready checks, battle res availability info, uh, combat timer, you know, combat res timers, uh, stuff like that. But also, do you want notes, attendance logging, invite tools, and a bunch else? This has got it all. It is an awesome piece of kit. And uh, of course, it is most definitely, though, one that's for the officers or the raid leaders. Grid 2 then. So if even after playing with advanced raid frame settings that we covered earlier, uh, the default raid unit frames are not to your liking or are lacking features, we think the grid 2 is a pretty damn good alternative that also looks the part. Healers obviously may want to continue using Healbot or Voodoo for the enhanced healer functionality, but for most other people, Grid just has a certain efficiency to it. And indeed for many players, a combination of Grid and Click uh, for the healers will be all that you'll need. Overall recommendations then. So you might be thinking, oh, whoa, I thought the Dragonflight was the end of add-ons. You may be screaming this at your phone or your monitor. Which would be a bit weird because people would hear you. But anyway, that's, look, that's never going to happen. Here's the thing. The game supports add-ons. Add-on developers will find specific solutions to specific problems. They're also brilliant. And there are still many genuine problems, right? Like not being sarcastic here. These are insanely good and they require a ton of effort to build, and it's great that they are being built. But if you stick to our advice, and you rock only a few in each category, only when you need them, then you should find yourself with a cleaner experience in Dragonflight, uh, maybe cleaner than ever before. So overall, what I would say is, Blizzard, keep it up. You've made a really good start with the UI revamp, but as an add-on recommendation list like this one shows, there is still a bit more work to do. But thankfully, they seem pretty amped up to do it, so let's, uh, let's hope they do that. Okay, 
These are our add-on suggestions. If you've got any of your own, be sure to leave them in that description down below. See you next time.